month is upon us and I am still here making videos to go on the internet for some reason. It's time for me to pick a brand new TBR for the month of April and I thought that this time I would get some help from the stars and I'm gonna be using my horoscope to choose my TBR for this month. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, the, the way I'm planning to do this is I have on my phone five different horoscope websites giving me my horoscope for the month of April and I am going to read those and pick out anything that sounds like it could be a book prompt. So, for example, if my horoscope tells me that the number 13 is going to be particularly lucky for me in April, then maybe I'll go with a book with the number 13 in the title, etc, etc. So, <laughs> we're going to give this a go, we're going to see if it works. I haven't read any of these horoscopes yet. They could just be full of a load of unhelpful shit, as horoscopes often are. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Mum. I am a Virgo. So I am going to be looking for Virgo horoscopes for April. Um, I have five and I will leave all of the websites that I'm using down below in case you're curious to read your horoscope for April. Um, it'll probably tell you you're going to stay in the house a lot. So the first horoscope that I have here is from sunsigns.org and they are telling me that the Virgo monthly horoscope for April 2021 predicts significant changes until the 20th of the month in various areas of life. It is wiser to allow things to happen and take a call after that. Planets Mercury, the Sun and Venus cause these modifications and you have the time to review your actions. Health prospects for Virgo personality are fabulous due to the encouragement from Saturn and Jupiter. Go me! <laughs> The professional aspect of life is being controlled by Mars. Love life will be passionate after the 20th of the month. I'll have to let Ryan know. <laughs> it is wise to flow with different events happening briskly. Okay, so that wasn't super helpful, sunscience.org. So, right, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to count to the 20th book on each of my shelves and if any one of those happens to be a romance book or anything to do with love then I will take that as a sign that sunsigns.org is telling me that this is the book for me. Okay, I have a potential candidate that I think could vaguely work for this prompt. This isn't I would say obviously like a romance novel or anything but I think it is concerned with love in various forms and that is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami and the blurb is as follows when he hears her favourite Beatles song Tori Watanabe recalls his first love Na Naiko I can't say that Japanese names are my strong suit in terms of pronunciation so please bear with me the girlfriend of his best friend Kazuki Immediately, he's transported back 20 years, 20, uh, see, there is a vague connection here, to his student days in Tokyo, adrift in a world of uneasy friendships, casual sex, passion, love, passion, uh-huh, uh-huh, you follow me, and desire, to a time when an impetuous young woman called Midori marches into his life and he has to choose between the future and the past. And I'm excited for this one. I have not read any Murakami, but I've been meaning to for so, so long. So I think this will be a really good chance to dive into his novels and see what all the hype is about. I've heard, I would say I've heard mixed things about Norwegian Wood and Murakami in general. Um, I know not everybody is super pumped on his treatment of women in his books, but I would say I've heard mostly good things about Norwegian Wood and everything I have heard has made me intrigued to try it. So yeah, this will be a fun one to, to see whether I am a Murakami stan along with many, many other people on booktube. So book number one, Norwegian Wood by Hiroki Murakami, the 
20th book on my third, no, fourth now, fourth fiction shelf over here behind me. I've had to rejig my entire book <laughs> shelf situation after buying way too many books the other day, as you will have seen if you watch my um, LGBTQ plus book haul. So yeah. Okay, moving on to my second horoscope for the month of April. And this is from a website called astrosage.com and they have conveniently got a little general section for their horoscope um, readings. So I'm just gonna read that one rather than going into like love, finances, career, etc, etc. <clears throat> the natives belonging to Virgo can often turn out to be logical and practical as well as tactful and stand out in the crowd for their humorous nature. See? My horoscope knows I'm funny. <laughs> you can deal with your problems easily because you know the art of making any conversation interesting. During the month of April, you will face some problems regarding your fortunes because luck may not support you. So whatever big and important decisions are made, postpone them for the latter half of the month so that you do not face any problem. So this horoscope just given me a free pass to be an indecisive bitch up until mid-April, which is fine by me. This month will be very important for business professionals and you will get good results in your business. Connections will also be made with good and influential people and your name and fame will increase in the society. Does this mean I'm going to get famous on booktube in April? The stars say maybe. Things can turn topsy-turvy with friends. So if there is such a thing, then you should try to stop the debate from escalating because friends are always useful in bad times. Truth. Little nugget of wisdom there from astrosage.com. This month can give you good benefits through foreign mediums. If your business is related to abroad, then you will set foot on the path of profits. You have to pay attention to your health problems in the latter part of the month. On the health front, this month may be somewhat weak. That's not what they were saying on sunsigns.org. What do you mean my health is gonna be somewhat weak? Oh, you can be successful in repaying a bank loan or, or old loan, but it will require strong willpower on your part. <sighs> well, thanks Astro Sage. That's a lot more negative horoscope reading for me for April. I can't say I'm a fan of that. But a book idea has come to me. Uh, things can turn topsy-turvy with friends. Bear with me. It sounds to me like Astro Sage is saying that April would be a good month to finally read Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. From what I understand, things go very topsy-turvy with, uh, <laughs> within this group of friends. Francis is 21 years old, cool-headed and observant. A student in Dublin and an aspiring writer, at night she performs spoken word with her best friend Bobby, who used to be her girlfriend. C. <laughs> when they are interviewed and then befriended by Melissa, a well-known journalist who is married to Nick, an actor, they enter a world of beautiful houses, raucous dinner parties and holidays in Brittany, beginning a complex menage a quatre. See, I told you! Topsy-turvy with friends indeed. But when Francis and Nick get unexpectedly closer, the sharply witty and emotional verse Francis is forced to honestly confront her own vulnerabilities for the first time. Now, I've been meaning to read this for ages and ages and ages because I am obsessed with normal people. It's such a good book. And I have heard mixed things in regards to whether her debut conversation with friends is better or worse than normal people. People generally seem to think that normal people is better than this one. Uh, and I'm curious. I'm curious to see where I am on the Sally Rooney spectrum. So yeah. And um, I have a copy of this to send to my mum as well. So maybe she will buddy read it with me this month, which would be fun and exciting. I love a buddy read. And I love my mum, because she's great. So yeah, Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends, book number two for April. Horoscope number three is from astroved.com and they are telling me 
Virgos will see some ups and downs this month. Sounds like the same as every month, to be honest. They may mainly focus on their work more than relationships, and they will undergo some work-related changes. I don't like the sound of that. Spouse, love, and children's well-being will be an additional focus. But first, they need to handle their career and financial aspects, as well as, as, well as sort out issues on the home front. They've been very focused on family in the last few months, so now they want to focus on their career. They want to focus on having a good career. Well, don't we all want to focus on having a good career? I think that's a pretty general statement to make in life. This one's harder. This is very vague. It's not giving me any sort of interesting specifics that I can pick up on. Hmm. Career and financial aspects. Hey. Hmm. 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 Okay, so astroverd.com is giving me a very strong message of work and career. So I'm going to go and have a look at my bookshelves and see if anything is jumping out to me in terms of being related to work or career or well-being. I did say something about well-being in there, so... Bear with me because I don't have a clue yet. <laughs> hey, I found something. Can you believe it? Because I can't, to be honest with you. But I totally forgot I own this, not gonna lie. This is The Prison Doctor by Dr. Amanda Brown, which is a memoir all about her time working as a doctor within prison settings. So I am not a doctor and I am not involved in the medical profession, but this is a memoir recounting this woman's experiences throughout her career. So Dr. Amanda Brown treats inmates in the UK's most infamous prisons, from miraculous pregnancies to dirty protests, and from violent attacks on prisoners to heartbreaking acts of self-harm, she has witnessed it all from her patients. In this eye-opening inspirational memoir, Amanda reveals the stories, the patients, and cases that have shaped a career spent helping those in need. Which, funnily enough, that's, that's a pretty apt way to describe my career, also helping those in need, because I work in social care, so yeah, not too, <laughs> not too, too dissimilar than, you know, careers involved, you know, helping others in need and in difficult situations, so yeah, um, we're going to give this a go, which is fun because I really enjoy non-fiction, and Prison is like weirdly something that I've always been interested in. I just finished watching like Inside the World's Toughest Prisons, <laughs> which I was like slightly addicted to for a couple of weeks there. Um, so yeah, this sounds like it'd be a really interesting and eye-opening read. It sounds like it'll be something that's like difficult to stomach in some places, but I have a strong stomach. I'm sure I'll make it through. So yeah, this is book number three, The Prison Doctor. Woohoo! This is working better than I thought it would! The next website I've pulled up is yearlyhoroscope.org and they have a very, very short little <laughs> description of my horoscope. Okay. The spotlight this month is in your area of outside resources of income. <sighs> Can we all stop talking about my financial situation, please? Horoscope websites. Uh, news concerning this in connection to a partnership or your mate could be on the agenda for you. Preoccupation could be created by this situation. Intuition and sense of responsibility will come into play. There should be lots of activities connected to your personal sources. Some unexpected expenses related to your line of work could come to pass. No thanks. <laughs> I'm broken up as it is. Um, inclination to act rashly should be curtailed and prudence be called for. Again, very vague. Very vague. Ooh. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. You're in my video now. <laughs> oh, are you, are you recording a video? I am indeed. I apologise profusely. Would you like to call me back then? I shall. I shall call you back when I am finished. Okay. Okie dokie. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. My sister's adorable. What does that mean? This is so vague and flimsy. Like, what are you even saying? 
There should be lots of activities connected to your personal... What does that mean? This is the most frustrating horoscope I've ever read in my life. I can't, I can't pull anything out of that to use as a prompt, to be honest, because I don't even really understand what they're saying to me, <laughs> to be honest. So I might have to find another one instead. But we will move on to another horoscope, which hopefully will be a lot more fruitful for me. Okay, this one is on astrologyk.com. April 2021 horoscope for Virgo. Uh, recommend showing leadership qualities and acting boldly in the matter of self-realization but not forgetting about honesty and decency in relation to others you should also take a closer look at your well-being do not overexert yourself at work and rest more done april 2021 will delight virgo with pleasant surprises good luck and unusual coincidence it is better to devote the beginning of the month to hard work and current duties, while the second half is more suitable for entertainment and romantic contacts. Recheck, finish, improve. This is the motto of the Virgo horoscope for the beginning of the first decade of April. Hmm? At the beginning of the month, the conjunction of the Sun and Venus in Aries will create a tense aspect to your sign. It takes concentration and patience. Mars and Gemini will also bring a tense aspect. Manifestations of irritability and irascibility are possible. Remain calm and don't fall for provocations. Okay, I'll try. Remember, during this period, it's important to maintain a balance between your I and the will of other people. The Virgo horoscope advises directing Martian energy to transform your inner complexes. In addition, during the waning moon, it is better not to waste energy, but to accumulate it. The new moon is the sign of Aries on April 12th. With a favourable opportunity for implementing past ideas and drawing up new plans, having time to implement them during the growing moon before April 26th. April 19th, oh my god, this is long. I'm so sorry. From April 19th, 2021, the sun enters the sign of Taurus, which will give Virgo a boost of confidence and love of life. Success in career, growth, and self realization will increase the overall tone of the body, which will have a beneficial effect on your health. I'm gonna get more toned? Gifts, lottery winnings, successful purchases are possible. Increased personal charm will contribute to success in your personal life. See, I'm only gonna get more charming in April prepare yourselves the third decade of the month mars entering the sign of my god it stinks of burning my house isn't on fire is it give me a minute yeah nothing's on fire so i guess i'm just having a stroke do you know what i'm gonna pick out from this lengthy ass horoscope it's a flimsy <laughs> little prompt but I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with it. I don't care. It's my channel. I do what I want. Um, gifts, lottery winnings, and successful purchases are possible. I just made a load of new purchases, and I really should find out if they were successful or not. Shouldn't I? So I have a list on my phone of all of the books that. I included in my LGBTQIA plus book haul so that I you know could remember <laughs> what I bought I am gonna scroll through with my eyes closed and just point to a piece to a point you see I'm gonna point to wherever on my phone and whichever book I land on is the book that I'm gonna have to read for this prompt for the fourth horoscope okay ready a Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale. Okay. Oh my god, how lucky. I was really excited to read this one. Ah, oh, A Place Called Winter by Patrick Gale, which, like I said, if you watched my book haul, you will have seen. This is about Harry Kane, who becomes involved in some kind of scandal um, back at home in England and is forced to leave his home and move to... Um, the is in the newly colonized yeah um a newly colonized town in canada and yeah this sounded so fucking good i'm really excited ah oh, this is shaping up to be a sick tbr i'm loving this horoscopes might be the new way forward so yeah a place called winter by patrick gale which is number four on my little stack Ooh. But now I'm going to have to find a brand new horoscope page because yearlyhoroscope.org was 
So I found a new website that looks like it could be promising. It's instyle.com. Obviously they're going to know what they're talking about in regards to horoscopes. Okay, hopefully this one will be a little bit more prompty. <laughs> You'll spend a lot of time in your own head this month, Virgo. Don't I always? And you need only keep an eye on your ruling planet, Mercury, to see why. The messenger planet will move into Aries on the 3rd and ask that you lift the mental trapdoor that leads to your subconscious. You don't have to dust off every old axe you've ever wanted to grind, but you should take some time to spring clean your backlog of quiet concerns and nagging worries. Is it at all possible that now that some time has passed, you can resurface these feelings and air them to those who need to hear them? This is right territory for a catastrophic thought spiral. <laughs> I have a catastrophic thought spiral every day. It's an important task to take on in order to feel lighter by the time Mercury makes its next move. And that move will come in on the 19th when Mercury drastically shifts gears closes that trap door and urges you to look outside of yourself for answers. If the first half of the month tested your emotional fortitude, the second half will help you gauge your mental flexibility. Are you willing to stretch past your normal limits of perception? To what extent are you able to expand your focus? How wide is the periphery of your mind's eye? I don't know! How wide is the periphery of my mind's eye? Apparently April is the month to find out. Um, your earth sign stubbornness will initially balk at the very idea of thinking outside the box, Virgo, but a little discomfort can lead to major reward. And I'm gonna take that last line as the prompt. Okay. <laughs> I was, I'm gonna be mean. To myself basically that's what I've decided to do here and I am going to look for a book on my TBR that I am bricking it to read something that I've been putting off because I'm intimidated by it or I don't want to read it or I'm scared to start it for some kind of reason for whatever reason that may be I don't know I'm gonna go and have a look at my shelves now and I am going to pick out a book that I'm scared to read. I've been having a think, I've been having a look at what's on my shelves, and I'm gonna do something that I haven't actually done yet in one of these challenge videos, and I'm gonna include one of my eBooks in this because I haven't included them in my prior Pick My TBR videos for a couple of reasons. One, eBooks don't feel like real books to me. Like, they are all, in my phone. A lot of them I've gotten for free so I haven't actually spent any money on them and because I think because they don't take up physical space within my house they don't feel like they're on my TBR which is ridiculous because they are on my TBR and I have a lot of them and I've been neglecting them a lot so in favour of reading my physical books because I have so many. The book I've chosen I've chosen for a couple of reasons. One I DNF'd it before. Um, I didn't I didn't DNF it exactly. I read the first couple of pages and I was like, this isn't the right time for me to tackle this book. Um, so I just put it aside and the horoscope I read was talking about sort of, um, you know, looking at old worries and things from the back of my mind. So this is something that I would be revisiting as an old worry, I guess, in that sense. Number two, it makes me uncomfortable because it is a classic, which I do not read a lot of, and it is fucking enormous. And that is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So I have had this in ebook format for a long, long, long time. And I've said before that I have a love-hate relationship with classics. I have read a couple of classics that I think are amazing, and I've read a lot of classics that I think are just meh. So <laughs> reading classics makes me nervous. Um, it's not something that I've done a lot of. I haven't studied English literature since I did my GCSEs. So it's not something that I've had to read a lot of in like my academic experience. And yeah, so it's like, 
it's quite new to me still, like delving into the world of classics, but I really want to give it a go. And Anna Karenina sounds honestly like the plot of Anna Karenina from what I understand of it. It sounds awesome. It sounds dark and kind of tragic and full of misfortune, which I love. I do like a dark book. I like dark and difficult subject matter. And so Anna Karenina has been on my TBR for a long, long, long time. And I have wanted to read it so badly, but the size of it puts me off. And also just that it's daunting. It's famous, it's a classic. And what if after all this hype I've given it in my head, thinking that it's gonna be like a classic that I love or a classic that I could love, it's scary because there aren't many of them. <laughs> I've read like two classics, I think, that I've enjoyed and that is like The Bell Jar at Middlemarch. So I really haven't had a lot of luck with classics. So reading classics for me is quite daunting. It's quite scary. It puts me ill at ease a little bit. It's not the most comfortable experience. But that's what this prompt from this horoscope is all about, getting out of your comfort zone and reaping the rewards of that. So and I'm going to read Anna Karenina this month. I'm going to do it. I'm excited for a challenge. I've gotten some pretty friendly sized books for the rest of the prompts. I've got some non-fiction in there so I can read that alongside Anna Karenina maybe because I can sort of do fiction and non-fiction at the same time normally and yeah none of these look too intimidating to me so fuck it let's throw a 900 odd page ebook in there as well so i have these four lovely books and anna karenina as my april tbr so yeah let me know if you have read any of these or anna karenina um what did you think of them what do you think i will think of them where do you think i should start with this tbr and yeah, I will see you again at the end of the month for my wrap up. Yeah, I am excited for this one and I hope you are too. I will see you again soon. Bye.